Hello and welcome to Facebook Live on Sunday morning. Bear with me while I just sort my computer out. Okay, <coughs> excellent. I hope I did my volume on my phone. So if you could give us some thumbs up, that would be great. Just let me know that you can hear me okay. Yay, lovely, thank you. Morning, Helen. Okay, so just giving people a chance to uh, come on. Morning, everybody. Hope you're all well. On this horrible, well, it's a bit drab morning, isn't it? Morning, Chris. Oh, they've all... <laughs> <laughs> all the messages are flying in now they've all gone so I'm just going to say good morning to everybody how's that <laughs> okay so this morning I thought I would just show a few techniques with the stencil and uh, yeah just talk about a few things I've just watched I've just actually had a quick coffee and some breakfast and watched Marion's baby wipe technique where she's using my product so I can highly recommend so she's made these cards I know the wording will be around the wrong way sorry but she shows how to make those three cards on the uh, YouTube video so I did put a link on my page yesterday to Marion's YouTube um, channel so yeah highly recommend go along and have a look right somebody said they can't hear me can you let me know if you can hear me okay Maybe I didn't put the volume up. Bear with me a minute. Sorry if my finger comes into view. No, my volume is up. Okay, there's some... Yeah, it's it has actually stopped raining now, Philippa. It was uh, a bit wet and horrible when Merv and I went out earlier this morning. But uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's brightening up a little bit. But I think there's more on the way. So you can hear me. Right, okay. So I'm going to flip the camera and uh, run through all the, well, not all of the techniques, but some techniques that you can do with the stencil. So bear with me while I flip my camera. Okay, let's get you in position. Oh, my camera stand and my light are having a fight. That's better. Okay. You can hear me from the M54, okay. <laughs> You're obviously out and about then. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to um, concentrate using the background stencil. And, oh, get off. So with the background stencil and also the beautiful bloom stencil, that is fine on its own. It's, it, you can use it independently or you can use it with the flowers that come with the beautiful blooms die, die set as well. So... I pulled out some cards um, that the design team have done and just wanted to talk through. I was going to show you elements from the cards and talk through how how they did it. So with this one, it would help if I got my stencils out, wouldn't it? <laughs> got everything ready except for the two stencils that I'm going to use. That would be good. Now... I know that I always mark, well, I don't always because I haven't marked this one, so I can't say always. I like to mark what I class as the front of my stencil. Then I know I always use my stencil this way round. So I'm going to put my heart. Uh, just for some reason, especially when you've got wording and things like that on your stencils, I like to put a little mark so that I know it's up the right way. And also, um, when you put them through the embossing machine, your die cutting machine it's always really good to know which way is up if that makes sense especially if you're doing wording so it'll, it'll become clear later okay so with this one here that hazel has done and i'm going to use blending brushes and i think we'll have i do this in pink in kitsch flamingo so to create this um, pattern hazel 
they're really easy to join up. So I've got Kitsch Flamingo, I'm loading my brush up really well. And then I can put my colour down. In fact, Kitsch Flamingo probably wasn't a good colour to pick. I should have gone with Pick Raspberry because it would be much darker for you to see. In fact, let me switch because I want you to be able to get the most out of it visually. So I'm going to use Pick Raspberry instead. Load my brush up. Get this lined up again. I'll tell you what, let's flip the card over and then I won't, don't need to worry. Okay, so that's a nice position for you to be able to see. Right, I'm going to do another thing now. I'm going to bring in my, let's move this out of the way a second. I'm going to bring in this silica mat that I got because it's silicony and it holds the card in place. You can even place it against an edge and use the stencil that way, but because I'm using the stencil that's down the bottom there, I'm going to this. It just helps to stop my card from moving around. And it doesn't matter if I go over the edge onto the silicone mat, it means that I can wipe it and clean it really well afterwards. Let's bring my light back in, sorry. Okay. I also just remembered that I do have the um, magnetic board that would hold my piece of card or my stencil in place as well, which is another really good tool to have. But so I've got my first part done. I can then just overlap a couple of them so that I know the dots and the designs are... I've got those in the right place. And then when I carry on, I can extend my pattern. Now you can do this with all of them. It's really easy to do all of them like this. I can go back in over here, line it up. Take your time to line it up as well, because obviously you don't want it not to be right. And then fill in my gaps. And you just keep going and keep, keep on until um, everything is is filled in. Sorry, I've got my computer is buffering. Is it all okay with you all still? Seems to be, I'm still on, okay. No, oh my, I think my laptop's just playing up. Let me just reset it, sorry. I and mean, I do like to look at it to make sure that I'm actually in the right place so that you can see things nicely. Right, I'll take the sound off. Right, okay, that looks better. Okay, yeah, it's fine, great, okay. So that it's really easy to carry on with that, that design and fill the whole thing in. So you can create a lovely background like Hazel has here on her card. So that's a really nice, easy way to do it. I always clean my stencils after I've used them. And you can either do it, if I was just doing it like this, like sometimes I spritz it with water, sometimes I don't. It really depends whether I think it needs it. Um, if you're gonna do something like, I'm not gonna do this one yet. I'm hoping I'm gonna do this at the end. So it's the last thing I do. I'm not gonna make cards today. I'm literally going to show different techniques and then um, because I've got card samples ready to go with them. So if you're going to do something like this, which is Jo, Jo's done this one with that beautiful. I love that sunflower. What I love. She's used mica spray. So it's just beautiful embossed over the top. Gorgeous. But this bit here she's done, I believe, with a glitter paste. Now I've got an eye zinc texture paste and I've got um well sparkles to you so i'm going to make a glittery one but i'm going to put it on this comes just plain it's white i believe or just it's not clear i think it's white um, and then you can put different things on the top of it so i'm going to show you that as well but that bit be a bit later on so that's the flower sorry i'm just sorting out into different so something like this that joe had done you would put down a piece of card and then you would use some um 
washi tape or thin tape but washi tape is perfect and I thought I have got some thin washi tape so to create those areas so you want to protect the pieces on your card so I sorry I'm left-handed and for some reason I have to do it I'm not going to measure anything I'm just doing so that I can show you roughly how Joe did it. it's not quite in the middle but so you've got a rough idea okay so Joe actually put color down so she's got color all the way around the edge and then she's gone in so if we do oh it's a bit <laughs> it is a bit wonky I'm sorry Anyway, you get you get the idea, don't you? So I'm going to do this area here. I'm going to put some ink down first of all. And if you want to really protect the edge so you don't go over into the other card, I use the brush like on the on its side a little bit. So I can put some colour down first. Let's move Hazel's card out of the way. I do like to look after the samples. OK, and then I'm going to pick up some ink. And I'm going to bring in my diamonds. So you don't have to have the whole of the design. Start off gently, add in your ink. And then you can build the colour up. Because I always think with stencils, it's really nice if it like fades. And I love how, I notice this with Jo's, like how she's got the colour all the way around the edge. But then you don't have the diamonds all the way up to the edge. So I love how that faded ink, that faded in. Oh, it's eyes ink glitter in the pouches. Oh, right, I've got some of those. Excellent. So that's a really lovely way to do the, the background like Jo had done. So again, I know she's done different colours. I'm going to stick with one colour just to make it a little bit easier for myself. So just get an idea of some colour in the background and then we'll have the, the squares in this one. So Joe had just done the stripes and the diagonals, but I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up and put the squares in this one. And again, you don't have to have the colour being perfect all the way through. I love how you get the gradients of colour as well. Okay, so let's put a little bit more colour down. It's always better to have more colour on your brush and to go in more gently with your brush to apply that colour and then you won't get the brush marks showing. But I didn't worry about that too much because I knew I was going to put, like the colour isn't brilliant there that I've blended, but I know that I'm going to put something down over the top. So I'm going to take that. You're not going to notice it. Now, when you use the stripes, it's no good doing circles. You have to follow because it's quite open and the stencil is um how do i describe that it will move okay so it's you need to be going up and down in the, following the lines so whichever way you've got your lines make sure you apply your ink the same way and then you'll get the lovely pattern showing if you go round in circles these are going to move and you won't get your defined lines so I'm going to add a little bit of colour down here and then we'll do that last pattern and then we've got all of them just on there so I can show you so then we'll put this one in load my brush up again OK, so then we've got all the four different colours, but it's really nice because then when we reveal our. Oh, look at that. Keep those because I can use those again. How fab do they look with that bit of white around them? It really draws. Now I could chop those up and use those individually on cards. So like I did with this one. So this one I've done a, a rect I did a rectangle of the whole like the whole size of the stencil and then inked it did it in gradient shade so it is paler at the bottom and then cut it out and use it on your cards so that's a way of doing that as well 
but that equally that could go on a card now you could layer that up onto some white or to, onto black like joe has and that sentiment through the center beautiful obviously do some stamping as well because i do love how that that black stamping you would need to mask the area if you wanted to do that as well but beautiful so clean my stencil again with the lines make sure you do go up and down when you clean it as well so that you're looking after the stencil want it to last obviously and it is it's not delicate but you do need to treat that that one with a little bit of care okay what next that's the flowers that's a square one that's a square one oh i was going to show that wasn't i okay oh and that as well okay got lots of different samples to show you right okay so i want to show how i achieved let's move those out of the way how I achieve this plaid. So with my piece of card, and I'm going to change colours. Let's go. Oh, let's go. I think I did it. Yeah, twisted citron. Okay. So I've got twisted citron, and I've got my laid my brush up. And I've got my stripes. Now I want a piece of that's the whole length of the card so that I can add it to a piece of card. You could do the whole piece and then you'll get two pieces out of it. Whatever you want to. But as long as I'm going the same way, the same direction as the actual stencil, then my lines will be fine. And I want to sort of do up to that line. If you do too heavily over the top where you've already been, you will get a bit of a line. Ooh, I went off a little bit off there. Never mind. It won't show. Don't. If you do that, don't panic. Because when we start and add the colour over the top, whoops, you're not going to notice it. So if it is slightly off, please don't worry. So now I will use that part to line it up. And just come down okay so now I'm going to turn it the other way so I'm still going to have my stencil coming down and I can apply oh should we do it in a different color let's do it so it'll really show up then let's bring in a blue bear with me a minute sorry I can't get the ink pads out <laughs> I've got so little room here Ah, come on. Right, got my storage. Let's go with, um, I wanted Mermaid Lagoon. Oh no, mm, yeah, Mermaid Lagoon, where is it? There, I love Mermaid Lagoon. Okay, so bring in some colour. So now I know I've got lots of ink on my brush. Oh, as I've changed colour, always, always take that off first. So wipe that down, get rid of that excess ink because I know that my Twisted Citron ink pad is a wet one. So make sure you take that excess ink off your stencil as you'll just get blurry colours really. Okay, so pop this back in. And then it's always best to really load your brush up. Now you're going to get bits of blue and bits of green but it's going to be a different color green to the twisted citron because blue and green well it's a very yellowy blue a green blue neck oh look at that though how amazing does that look how different because i did this in the same colors it's very subtle but this one you can definitely see that that is the pattern you're making so again up and down haven't re-inked my blending brush. I've got enough probably on here. Just take your time. You can pull all this colour that's left on the stencil and use that up. Oh, how lovely does that look? Fabulous. It's so good for a man's card as well. Okay, I'm going to do the whole thing because then I've got a piece of card that I can turn it into something can't I 
So I could do a strip down on my card like I've done on that one. Or I can have a complete background and I could stamp a lovely happy birthday, the new happy birthday over the top. Oh, it's just fab. Don't worry about this. I've just gone down too far with my stencil. Do make sure you line it up. Let's grab the ink off of there. We'll cover that up. Not a problem. There we go. And that's what Hazel's little stars are good for and things like that as well. Any marks like that, just cover them up. Little butterflies, foilable butterflies, perfect for things like that. Oh, I went over the edge. So do watch that though. So if you're worried about doing that, then let me give you a tip. I'll show you how to get around that. Let's just finish these lines. Okay, so you can see here where I went over the edge of the stencil, so I was getting carried away, like I've inked over the edge here. So what you can do, I need a scrap piece of paper. Why is it thick? Right, okay, so I can put this. Right, let's line my stencil up first. Then line your stencil up. And if you go higher, you're less likely to go over the edge as well, actually. <laughs> okay, so line your stencil up. And then we can put a bit of paper in at the top there. And I'm not going to be inking as far up as there because I'm doing this bit down here now. So you're less likely to go over the edge if you put the stencil up a little bit higher. Oh, it looks really like tartan, doesn't it? Imagine that in red and green for Christmas. How fab would that look? OK, so that was how I achieved this. Now, where I've got this bit here, obviously you can really see that. So maybe I would put it on my card that way and I will stamp a happy birthday across there. So I would never throw that away because there's always something you can do with it. You can always cover up little things like this with your embellishments and things like that. So that's how I did the plaid. Let's wipe by. Right now I'm going to bring some water in because I need to get rid of this. Don't want these colours going on to my back of my other piece of work. And then again, make sure you wipe all the colour off. And if you put any water down, like I did there, make sure you dry your stencil properly before you go to the next technique. OK, which is... Oh, these were the ones I pulled out. All right, OK, so I was going to show this one as well. I love the fact that you can do argyle with this as well so instead of doing right i'm going to pick out another color hang on i'm going to pick out i'm going to do picked raspberry and wilted violet this time so i'm going to go with picked raspberry first and load my brush up and i'm going to start off you don't have to go really strong colours. You can make it softer colours. You obviously just have to either apply the brush a lot softer or start off with a softer colour too. So let's just do, I won't do the whole thing. It doesn't take that long, but I'm just going to do an area. But I want to show you how we achieved the Argyle pattern. So as long as I'm making sure I'm lining up those diamonds before, I can keep that pattern going. And they are really easy to line up. And let's have a bit down the bottom here. And over here as well. So it was lovely to see on... Um, Facebook that lots of you have already got your orders so I can't wait to see what you uh, create first in fact I did actually see somebody had created a, a card with the stencil with the flower stencil I was like this is fantastic and he just got it and you're straight in there using it okay I'm gonna have to do all of it now because it's just oh, it's lovely I love stencils I do really do think somebody else said that they I think it might have been Philippa that they're so underrated and they really are. I think you'll be seeing 
lots more stencils from me in the future because they just are so there's so many techniques you can do with them okay so i'm loading up my my purple brush I need to wipe my pink off my stencil it would probably be okay because the purple is a stronger color but we won't risk it so now it's really easy to put this over and you can see that that is lined up i'm gonna get it as near to the centers of that of the first diamond that you've done so just take your time and then we can come in and obviously where it touches the pink with the purple you're going to get a different color again look oh fab I did the blues and greens the first time because I wanted it to be, look like a, a men's argyle jumper because I thought that would be really good for a, a man's card then Oh, I am rather loving it in these pinks and purples as well. Imagine all the different colours. Again, red and green. What a fabulous background. And then just to stamp, either stamp the joy or die cut a Merry Christmas and put that over the top. And the plaid done in red and green for Christmas with just a Merry Christmas over the top. Lovely, really simple card. So lining the purples, not the pinks, Julie. Nearly went wrong. And I'm trying to vary the amount of colour I put on the brush as well, or the pressure you, when I use the brush so that you do get to see some different colours. So yeah, how about that? How lovely is that? And you could do little dots in the centres as well. So you could use your dots of um, liquid pearls, things like that, just to put centres in the middle. So that's the Argyle. Let's clean that off. Yeah, stencils are just great, but they're so useful. They really are. And I want, with doing this one with the four different backgrounds and making them really nice and easy to join up, that was like my thinking behind it. Okay, so with these ones, I'm actually not sure how Joe did this. Joe must have done, and maybe put tape across the stencil. Right, that's how I would do it. It might not be how Joe did it. Let's put that up there. But this is how I would do it. And Joe, if it's not how you did it, then please feel free to shout. So if I was going to do a bit across the bottom here, first of all, I would want a piece of tape across my card, which is going to help me to ground it as well. I don't know if that's straight, but I'm hoping it is. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape over the rest of my and I'm going to do this in two colors okay so I'm going to line my stencil up so it's just below the tape and I'm going to go in and do my purple and it doesn't matter if I go straight over the top with the one below let's line it up a bit more because um, I've got tape over it so I can just brush straight over the top And keep going all the way along so then i can wipe my stencil so i've got the purple off and then i would bring in the pink oh should we offset it should we not have them lined up let's see what that looks like so i've offset this so it's going to look more like bricks and you can use the one above to try and keep it straight Actually, this one would probably look really nice offset as well. Okay, clean your stencil and then let's go blue next. Then we'll go back to putting it where the purple was. So the purple and blue should line up. So like I say, I don't know if this is how Joe did it, but this is how I would do this. Really nice and quick, but it's really lovely use. Ah. Oh. too quick sorry right, let's come back in with another purple one take your time is the name of the game don't rush like i am just i've got lots to share with you and i'm sorry 
I shouldn't have done that. But I will put a sentiment over the top, so. Or a glossy. There you go. Glossies are good for that too. Okay, so then I've got my lovely border and I can take this piece of tape off so I've got no ink up there. Just got that horrible blue spodge there. But again, gives you a really nice, different way. Never thought of opposites. <laughs> there you go. Why not? Just gives you a different look, doesn't it? But I, I'm assuming that I didn't see Jo's comment. Sorry. I don't know if she's has said that's how she did it. OK, I know that she said, take your time. Oh, you use finger daubers. Brilliant. Yes, that would be perfect. I've seen another thing with the finger daubers this morning, which I must pass on at some stage. I'm going to do a top tip uh, with finger. I saw finger daubers being used to apply glue to the back of your little, uh, fan you know, intricate dies. I thought that was really good. So use a, a sponge dauber to put your glue on. Well, that was fabulous. OK, so that was how I would do Joe's version. And then with Philippa's. So Philippa's card where she's done this. Let's take the tape off my. I would keep all this tape because you can use it again and again. Just make sure that you wipe any ink off of anything. Now with Philippa's. Did you colour first, Philippa? Or did you draw your black? I think I would colour first. Or have you got good eyesight that you could do it with a black pen? Um, where's my black pen? I've got a gold pen. OK, so you could. Trace around your stencil. The only thing you need to do with things like this, and the gold pen is a very wet one, is be careful how you lift it up because the pen's going to seep through your stencil. So be careful because if you get any on the back, which I have, it's going to come through. You can so you can look how different you can make it look as well. So clean that off before I go back in. Oh, you could use um, a white pen on dark coloured card. So you can really just pick out which ones you want to use and how different all of that is going to look on your card. So just be interested. I, you drew around it first. I, I, then did you take the stencil away and colour? I, I don't know if I have good enough eyesight now. Anyway, so that's how Philippa did it. She drew around it first, but I, I would... I don't know if I've got a white pen here. I have. White pens aren't always brilliant, though, are they? But let's try. Let's try. Oh, and lovely metallic gel pens. I've got those somewhere. Oh, mmm. OK, so I've got it up the right way still. So let's see. I should make sure my... White pen is working. Yep. Ooh. Whoops. Might have to have white squares then. Okay, I don't know how this will work. Let's see. If I keep my... It might bleed all underneath. So this is a play with no testing first. Oh, why is it white pens sometimes are great and other times... OK, so let's take my time. OK, so you do get a different look, but it would work. And I think like metallic gel pens, ooh, that could look lovely. OK, so we know how Philippa did this background now. So draw around it first and then colouring it in. OK, so I wanted to show... I'm going to show how to do, um, yeah, okay, so these two cars, I'm going to put one up there because that horrible light. Um, these two, you, I can't pull it out on camera, but I wanted to show you, I actually um, embossed these through my die cutting machine. So 
I used my magnetic platform and my, let's move this out of the way, and my cutting plate and a piece of card. And I have to remember the way round to do this. I never can. Um, I think you put the mat down and then your card. Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? I can never remember the order. You have to follow it on your instructions, <laughs> on your machine. Oh, I can't get two out. No, so do one piece at a time. Okay, let's see if I've got it right. Bear with me a minute. So I had it with the tan mat down, then my piece of card. Oh, yes, and then look. Look how embossed that is. Oh, my God. Right, so tan mat, piece of card, stencil. Look at it. Isn't that fabulous? Oh, wow. And so this is now how I coloured. I coloured this. And cut a, I just made it big enough and I cut out a tag shape and then used that on my card. So when I ink blend over this, get those out of the way. So let's, let's do a green one again because it did show up really quite well actually. So just add in some ink. So you'll get it over the background as well. I think I used peeled paint for that one because that's a really lovely soft colour. But there, so how lovely is that? But you, in real life, you can see and feel the texture. Beautiful. And I love it just in white even. But so that was how I did... Let's put that over there. That's how I did these as well. These are... Um, I put the stencil back over when I coloured these ones. So if you don't want... So like, let's put that there. So if I didn't want the white of the stripes to get coloured, you can put the stencil back on and add your colour just to the raised pieces. And then when I take that away, you've still got the white underneath, but the raised pieces are now coloured. So that's how, if you don't want it to show all over, then that's how you do it. You put the stencil back over before you add your colour. Sorry, there's someone at my door, but it's okay, my husband's done it for me. <laughs> okay, so clean my stencil off. And then, so that's that technique. Pop them to one side. And I want to bring in the technique that Hazel had done with her flowers. So this is where she's used the flower stencil to create that shape. So let's bring in my flower stencil. And then she's used the mesh to stencil through it. So if we take one and I need a black pen. Bear with me while I find a nice black pen. No, that's not a pen. Won't get much out with that. That's a pick-up stick. Okay, I hope this one doesn't bleed because this isn't what I would have... Oh, I know where this one. Sorry. There should be one down here. I think this one will be better. I hope. Okay, so Hazel has drawn round her flower shape. So that she's got her daisy first of all and then I'm going to carefully lift this in case any ink ah oh, I missed the petal let's put it back uh, and I've caught the ink now because it was wet okay you have to lift the stencil carefully so we won't it won't show when we do the, the stencil in okay so then I'm going to put my mesh down over the top and because this is probably a little bit 
wet still. I would always recommend taking any excess that you have. Yeah, look at that. That would have all moved. So take, dry what you've done. Oh, there's a glossy. <laughs> dry any of your inking that you've done. Then I'm going to put my mesh on. Let's get it so we can just about cover all of it. And then I'm going to put the flower down over the top. And I should have kept the stencil in the same place. Because I've got to find this the right way up for the daisy now because the daisy oh there we go right so now I've got the, the the stencil over my pattern perfectly but my stencil underneath has moved a little bit let's move that over a bit there so then we get line the stencil back up because you don't want to go outside your pencil marks and hold that in place and now when we stencil through we're only getting the mesh design in the flower petals how clever is that i love that so you could have diamonds in there i think the mesh works probably really well i'm oh, sorry i should have put the hazel's card there um, I think the mesh works really well for this one, I have to say. And I love how Hazel did it as a, a piece of card, spritzed it with the diamond, um, I can never remember what it's called, pearl mist glitter pearl. So she's put that on the top of it. So it's all beautiful and shiny. And then she had a little tiny strip left and she, said, she was going to throw it away. It's like, no, put it inside. And how lovely is that? So it just gives really new lease of life to your stencil. So you're combining the two now, which I just think is beautiful. If you And I think she'd made an inky background before. So she got some colour on there and went in with a deeper colour, which is really nice. I love the whiteness of this as well, which I thought was quite similar to Jo's, where she's done the lovely background just with all the pale daisies and linking them up almost, but and then got that lovely centre. So I'm going to show you that next, actually. That leads me on to that. Let's bring another piece in. So I'll do a couple of... Let me just wipe my mesh before I forget. And I'm going to bring my, my flower and I'm going to do some pink daisies on here. So I'm just literally going to randomly... I mean, just look. How, oh, I love this stencil so much. I really do. Even on its own, but I will show you in a minute with die cutting the um, beautiful blooms as well from it. So we'll use it in conjunction with the dies. So I'll show you how that works if you've got the dies already or if you want to treat yourself to the dies. Okay, so just a bit down here. But this is what I love as well, how you can just add these little elements in over the edge, but it just finishes your card. It really does finish it off perfectly. Okay, I'm happy with that. So if I want to have the embossed centres like Jo has got on here, which are just beautiful, I need to heat this so that that is dry because otherwise it's going to stick to all my pink um, daisies as well. So I'm just going to bring in my heat tool and give this a quick blast so I can dry that distressed oxide off. Now, you wouldn't think it's going to be very wet because of... There's very little ink on there, really. And there is a test you can do to see if you've dried it enough. So if we take our... I'm going to put platinum in the middle. Who would have guessed? OK, so if we bring a piece of card in. Before you do your stenciling, if you just pop some down on your card and give it a shake and just see if any of it sticks to the pink ink which it's fine, it's not, then you know that you've dried it enough. If it's sticking to the pink ink, you can knock 
the embossing powder off and then heat it again and finish it off. But so we're going to take our stencil now and our embossing ink pad. So my wow pad. And then I have a little sponge that I keep. Actually, I had a big one the other day. Where's that gone? Bear with me. There we go. It's a white one, I believe. Right. So I've got a sponge as well. And I still want to use my anti-static bag because I don't want it to stick other than in the centres still. So I'm going to take my Wow Embossing Ink Pad and I'm going to pick up some ink and I'm going to place my centre in the centre of my flower. So I'm doing this one here and I'm just going to sponge through and I can go down to this one and sponge through. You can do one at a time or you could go and do, try and stencil all of them, but just be aware of where you're going with your, st with your stencil and your sponge that you're not touching something that you've already inked up. So go carefully around. Ooh. Let's bring that one into there. And I'm just dabbing through. Hopefully I'm putting enough ink on. I don't know if I did that one, so let's just try that one. I might have done. If I have, then it's going to be in the wrong place. So I apologise, but let's see. So systematic is key. <laughs> key to knowing where you've been, really. Okay, so then we can take our embossing powder and hopefully I've put enough ink on for them to stick. And for us to have some nice pretty centres. So any excess powder that is sticking, I might have gone over, I don't think I did, but with my pad, but just brush those aside, little tap on the back. That one's not very well, might not have got enough powder on that one. That's better. Right, so now it's ready to be heated. Put that away. Put my lid on my lovely platinum. And then with my heat tool, I would do this from underneath, but I don't have room with the camera. So I'm heating from the top. And it's going to give me that lovely platinum embossed centre. just beautiful such a simple card and just with that I love how Jo has just added that you're a one you are wonderful in every way she's inked up the piece of card so she's got the same color that she used for her daisy back her daisy stenciling but isn't that beautiful now you could if you wanted to you could um put embossing ink through the whole flower and add have the whole flower done with um, embossing powder isn't that fab beautiful so I did use embossing ink so you'd need to make sure you wipe your stencil again you need to make sure it's clean even though it's you know clear and you can't see it make sure you wipe it um, what else do I want to show you so that was also the same technique because I saw Joe's I loved that so I just did it with a different flower and again I've used the platinum on the happy birthday with platinum on vellum because I wanted you to still be able to see the other colour, the other flowers through, although I was going to be covering them up. Um, and this was the one that I just, this is just beautiful, this card. I absolutely adore this card. This is so me. Um, so simple. Five stencil flowers, they all overlap. I would imagine Joe maybe started with the centre one and went out. But just beautiful. And again, she's silver embossed, those centres. Just so pretty. 
Um, I'm just going to show this one of Philippa's again. So clever. She used the leaf part, the leaf, the vein detail on the stencil to create the snowflake, which I think is so clever. And again, you could um, ink it like she's done. Then you could put put it back on, and just with the um, with a sponge and some ink, you could just catch certain areas. So you could have some embossing on it as well if you wanted to. Well, I've shown how to extend. I showed how to extend the lines. So how Philippa's done this with her inks as well, which look beautiful and and extending it together as well. So she's got a thinner strip, and then she's got this wide block as well, which I think just looks fabulous on her card. And then the same with Hazel on this card. She extended the the stripes down the card and then on the inside she did them going across so you've got both both ways of using it which I think is fabulous really lovely okay so I'm going to show you how to do the die cutting with the flowers so bear with me let me bring in my okay so if you have this beautiful blooms die set these big flowers you can die cut, so you end up with this. But I'm going to die cut them because I need the waste to work with. And then you can use the stencil to colour them. And you can also die cut the skinny one and place that over the top of your stenciled one. I then had a little play. I used the stencil and added some lines. And then because I like drawing, I added some detail, different details to the petals. So you can really have a real play. But you can also use your um, background stencil. We could do the mesh again on here. There's so much you can do. So I'm gonna die cut, let's move those out of the way. I'm gonna use my, I've got them in my Sweet Meadows set because that was the collection they came with. So I'm going to use, I'll do one of each. How about that? So we'll do one. We need the big part. So the outline part, not the skinny part. So not the skinny bit, but you need the outline part. And let's get rid of the tan mat. Let's put a piece of card down. So I need a daisy. I'm gonna be able to get that in. I think so. Right, bear with me while I just die cut this. Oh, I'll do it separately. I do it. I will do it separately. I'll do those two together. They'll be fine. And then I'll do a separate one. So bear with me while I cut these. So that's one, run the other one through. And I mark my dies so that I know where they line up with the skinny die. So if I was wanting to die cut that skinny die as well, which is this one, I've marked the skinny die that I know that that's where it goes together when I'm layering them up if I want to. Just a really good tip to mark them put them together just one time and mark them and then you only have to do it that once and it's always done okay so I've got my last one there right so let me put my dies away because I don't want to lose those because I use them all the time now with the dies so what I should do is I should turn it over line it up and then you know where they go back in even when you're die cutting so they can go away properly okay so you can put the waste back in and then you can this one's quite easy to line up so you can line your stencil up over the top whoops Get it in the right place. Just look so I get a nice even border around the edge. When I'm happy, I can add some color. Oh, 
course I should have undone my lid of my ink pad first let's have put a bit of pink on the edges and because I've got this in my waist it doesn't matter if I go over the edge at all because um, I'm only using the waist as a guide to hold it so it's ready to be used so I can pop it back in and I can bring in one of the centers so let's bring in the blue now this one has got a five petal center so I can use the five petal center make sure I've got the stamens in all of them and again I don't have to worry about going over the edge at all because I've got this just in the waist holding it so that I can lift this off and then that is ready now to be a flower to go on a card if I wanted to curl and shape this all I do is I cut into the centers which is what I would do with my my when I die cut them anyway um, but I'm more than likely I would put the skinny outline on the top just find my pokey tool and I have to remember as well that this is still wet like the ink so I don't want to smudge it really but just curling it around my pokey tool and my beautiful blooms die set is still available and you can emboss the center if you wanted to so let's bring that's that flower let's bring in this one pop that one back in let's wipe my stencil clean okay so now that's this one and you have to line it up sometimes it takes this is why I mark it up oh, that looks oh that was lucky wasn't it there we go so with that I'm going to do a blue one in the middle and you don't have to do heavy you can have it you know like going out oh, I love that. how fab is that and then if we want a different center so let's put the splodgy one I love this splodgy one again you could do this with the embossing ink so you can emboss that you can do it with ink once and then twist it and now move it a little bit and now heat emboss it so you get a different pattern again so that is that flower and then my daisy pop that in let's just wipe my stencil again and bring the daisy one in and I'm going to bring my have I got enough ink on this I love this I've got a real thing at the moment about dried marigold right there we go no that's not it it looks like it's it and it's not okay so there we go yeah I really love dried marigold such a pretty yellow I'll show you one of the cards that I did with it such a pretty color so lovely and then we'll put the little one in the middle put a bit of pink on it as well there so then we've got just a really clever way of using the waste with your dies and that was that was the dried marigold one how lovely is that and I've used my dinky circle as well and a little bit of the diamonds in the background and because you can use the dies with the stencil together I've actually die cut glitter stamen centers so that was that was that oh right one more I'm gonna do I hope anyway I haven't done this for ages so luckily I opened one pot this morning before I came on air literally two minutes before I came to air and I was going to do gold um, texture paste with it but it had gone like liquid so I need to mix it all up and I didn't have time it was literally just before we were about to go to air so I'm going to use the texture paste I'm going to use the squares like Joe did actually so this is I think texture paste and I hope it's going to be okay because like I say 
oh yeah it's lovely and soft still I haven't used this for oh, ever so pop some down through the stencil make sure afterwards you clean your stencil off most important into some water I'm gonna drag this over I'm not bothered if I don't get it am I bothered yeah I am actually okay so let's try and get this really nicely up to the edge like Joe did I'm trying not to go in the other areas what I would probably do and I'm probably being way too tight with it um, is I would mask off the rest of the stencil so if I didn't want these areas covered I would actually put some tape just to be sure okay I think I have everything covered okay let's wipe that off put the lid back on don't want my stencil to move that is the only thing let's wipe that okay so then you lift carefully your stencil so you've still got your lovely square design now I'm going to wipe this off as much as I can because I want to talk to you for a little bit and I don't want that to set. I wonder if I do it with a bit of water as well. And you don't have to rush too much because the paste will stay wet for me to clean my stencil just a little bit like that. Right, those and those have got to be washed afterwards. So then we can bring my piece of card back in to catch the bits. Now this is, um, oh, it's got a big bit of something in there. Okay, this is Sparkles and this is Copper Fire. Oh, now I've dropped it on there. Whatever that was, right. So you can sprinkle this over the top and it will stick to your texture paste. I don't use my stencils like this very often. Oh my goodness, I can see what I'm going to be doing. That bit off. How lovely is that? Look at all that sparkle. I've got so many gorgeous sparkle embossing, um, sparkle glitters from WOW. Oh, how lovely is that? Now I can leave that to dry and that will dry beautifully. And then that can be the background for my card. And I could add, especially in that colour, I could add beautiful sunflower like Joe did here. Look at that shimmer. Oh, beautiful. How lovely is that? So bear with me a minute. I'm going to flip the camera. Oh, right. So let's move that light out of the way. So I hope you enjoyed that. I've really had a lovely fun. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that was an hour. I was going to say, I've only been on five minutes. <laughs> I haven't I've been on an hour and five minutes. That was a lovely hour. Anyway, so I've got lots and lots of different backgrounds and stencils and everything that I can use. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something. Um, did I tell you about... I did tell you about Marion's Baby Wipe YouTube video is up now. And there's another one for this card. I know the words around the wrong way, sorry. But showing how she made this card. And that's going to be on Wednesday at midnight. So Thursday, unless you're up very late. <laughs> okay, so thanks ever so much for joining me. Don't forget that all the products are available from Dragon's Paper Craft, from Craft Stash, from Let's Create, from Forget Me Not Craft Cabin, from Maximum Crafts and Craft Bliss. And then they will be, they're winging their way over to the USA at the moment. They should be with them early next week. So that's Simon Says. And I do believe as well that you can get them from Craft Stash USA as well. Um, and then also they're winging their way the latter end of this coming week for Arts and Crafts Online Australia. Um, lots of inspiration on the Pinterest board. So if you go to uh, pinterest.com forward slash Julie Hickey Designs, you'll see lots of inspiration on there. And I'm planning another live 
probably tomorrow it'll probably be during the day but if you if you're not around when it comes up then you'll be able to watch on catch up so thanks ever so much and i'll post my workshop soon as well probably mm, need to do it soon actually okay i'll, I'll post my my workshop soon for this scent with love okay thanks ever so much enjoy your sunday and i will see you soon bye